Good morning, my name is Hans Seuss. I'm from the Department of Paleobiology. And I would like to talk to you today about an unusual new dinosaur that was recently described from the very end of the age of the dinosaurs in the western interior. New dinosaurs these days, if you judge by the media, seem to be a dime a dozen, but certain types of dinosaurs that we find still represent entirely new ecomorphs, entirely new body plants of dinosaurs, and it's always exciting to find these because they show something that paleontologists have long suspected, namely that dinosaurs really had attained an amazing diversity. Some researchers think that there were probably several thousand species of non-avian dinosaurs, that is dinosaurs other than birds that uh, have existed during the about 160 million years that these animals existed. The, in North America, the latest Cretaceous, the period between about 66 and 68 million years ago, is still represented by a very diverse dinosaur fauna. Here are sort of two prominent members, T. rex, of course the iconic dinosaur on the right, as an apex predator in this ecosystem, and an armored dinosaur, so-called nodosaur, on the left being menaced by it. These large dinosaurs have always attracted the attention of the public. They are a staple of museum displays in this country and the world over. But along with these dinosaurs, you occasionally find small, typically very delicate, fragile bones of a variety of other dinosaurs, showing that not all dinosaurs were gigantic, but also that there was a considerable diversity of animals out there that we would now classify as dinosaurs. Most prominent in the Hell Creek are uh, certain type and other Cretaceous formations in the Western interior. And the Western interior is not just the United States, but also coeval beds in Western Canada. We get these strange little bones here on the right, part of a foot, and on the left, a very unusual looking lower jaw of a dinosaur. It has this very peculiar elevated facet for the jaw joint, which allowed the jaw to slide back and forth. And it's completely without teeth. In fact, the effective functional surface of the jaw is made up by a sharp bony cutting edge, much like you see once you take off the horny beak on a, a, a bird head or a turtle head. The, un the affinities of these peculiar remains were uncertain for the better part of a century. The first ones were discovered and actually formally described in the 1920s. It was not until the 1970s that a Polish paleontologist suggested that there were similar dinosaurs in Central and East Asia. This is one of them, a so-called oviraptor, uh, mistakenly named egg thief, even though the eggs that it was supposedly preying on turned out to be its own. Has the sliding jaw joint at the back and has no teeth at the front, no trace at all of teeth, not even tooth sockets or any structures that suggested the former presence of teeth. In the 1990s, two uh, commercial collectors found two partial skeletons at, in the Hell Creek Formation, the most important of these latest Cretaceous formations, in South Dakota near the town of Buffalo. And a few years later, a team headed by my co-author, Tyler Lyson, who's in the vertebrate zoology department at the, current, at the present time as a postdoctoral fellow, found another partial skeleton. So we had three partial skeleton, which in total represented about 90% of the total skeleton. This is a very unusual looking creature, even by dinosaurian standards. The head is surmounted by a very tall, thin, bony crest, most of the, the height of which is actually preserved, so that's not reconstruction. The jaws are completely devoid of teeth, and it has that very peculiar looking jaw joint. In fact, if you look at the jaw joint from above, you can see rather than a cup-shaped structure, like in most vertebrates, it is actually a rounded surface with a ridge in the middle, and that ridge fits neatly into a groove on the quadrate bone of the skull, so that this jaw could move forth and uh, back and forth, and you could basically see how these sort of cutting edges of the jaws then would sort of trap food and cut it. The tail of this animal is remarkable in that it has, at the very end, very unusual vertebrae that are basically immobile relative to each other, sort of in a shingle-like arrangement. And we see a similar structure in birds that have developed an elaborate ta tail fan. Here's a reconstruction of the skeleton. The yellow bits are actually preserved. Since then, we have been, since the publication of our paper, we have been contacted by various curators and collection managers 
across the country who have additional bones of this creature. So we will get more closely to 100% in reconstructing this very unusual dinosaur. What is noteworthy about it is that, as I said, the head is very unusual, being surmounted by this tall, thin, bony crest, having no teeth. It has a long, slender neck, long, very bird-like forearms. In fact, the arm looks very much like that of Archaeopteryx, generally considered the oldest known bird. Long, slender fingers that end in enormous claws. Very long hind legs with proportions that are typically found in fast-running animals and still a fairly well-developed tail, which was a bit of a surprise since we thought that at this point in this particular group being related to birds, that the tail would have been a little bit shorter. And as I mentioned, this very unusual end to the tail. Now, if we use this skeleton together with some extraordinarily preserved fossils from the early, Jurassic, uh, early Cretaceous of China, we can sort of reconstruct it with a great deal of confidence. These creatures had feathers on their arms. In fact, some specimens have quill, little quill notes where the feathers attach, and there's a tail fan. When we look, we have two groups of these dinosaurs, one predominantly in North America, one in Asia, but the biogeographic story gets complicated by the fact that there are two Asian representatives within this mostly North American clade, suggesting to us on a larger scale that across the Bering Strait there was a continued faunal exchange during the Cretaceous. So this dinosaur, along with other dis discoveries, underscores that even in the very latest Cretaceous we still had a considerable diversity of dinosaurs and that this style is very, it fits very well with the catastrophic extinction scenario that most researchers now invoke to explain the disappearance of dinosaurs other than birds. Thank you.